Okay, this is my first video on fatty acid biosynthesis, and I want to first start by talking about the formation of Milano-CoA. Milano-CoA is a really important intermediate in um, fatty acid biosynthesis, okay? So we want to understand how it's formed, okay? What goes into making this molecule? And essentially what you'll find out, if I'm just giving the layman's terms explanation of this process, you're taking acetyl-CoA and you're using an activated CO2 group from this bicarbonate ion, and you're going to essentially form, of course with energy, this molecule here, Milano-CoA. And all you're doing is carboxylating it. So what you're doing is you're carboxylating acetyl-CoA and you're forming Milano-CoA, essentially. Now of course there's much more deeper and detailed process than that. And so this is occurring in the cytosol, okay, and that's different from where beta oxidation is occurring. Beta oxidation occurred in the inner mitochondrial matrix, okay? So right off the bat, we can see that there's separ separation of these two pathways, okay? They're not occurring in the same location in the cell. And after that, what happens here is this acetyl-CoA is carboxylated, producing Milano-CoA, all right? And the reaction is catalyzed by acetyl-CoA carboxylase complex, okay? So this is a complex meaning that it's a multiple enzyme complex. It consists of three enzymes that require biotin and ATP for activity. All right, and that's exactly what I have over here. I have my ATP, I have my biotin, I have my um, bicarbonate ion, and also um, at the, after it goes through the reaction, I'm forming my Milano-CoA, ADP, inorganic phosphate, and H+. Okay. So that's pretty much how the reaction looks, okay? That's what's going on in Lehman's terms. But the details of the reaction are a little bit more um, intricate. So acetyl-CoA carboxylase consists of three proteins, and I already said that. But now I want to say what those three proteins are. And those three proteins are biotin carboxylase, biotin carrier protein, and carboxyl transferase. So Biotin carboxylase catalyzes the transfer of a carboxyl group to biotin. Okay, so biotin is kind of acting like this um, holder for the carboxyl group. Okay, it's going to hold the carboxyl group, and it's all, and, and then it's going to also be involved in the transfer. So, biotin carboxylase catalyzes the transfer of the carboxyl group to biotin. The activated CO2 comes from the bicarbonate ion, which I had pointed out previously on here as being right here, comes from this biotin, it comes from this bicarbonate molecule, <clears throat> or bicarbonate ion rather, and biotin is bound to a carrier protein, okay, um, by an amide le linkage. So the biotin is bound to the biotin carrier protein by an amide linkage, and the biotin carrier protein is long enough, okay, and flexible enough to transfer the carboxyl group to the acetyl-CoA. And that's a reaction that's catalyzed by carboxyl transferase. Okay, that's the third enzyme in the process. And that produces your Milano-CoA. Okay, so that's, that's how the process is working. That's how those three enzymes are working in, in sequence to transfer our carboxyl group from to acetyl-CoA to form Milano-CoA. All right, so that's what's going on there. Now, another fundamentally interesting thing about Milano-CoA is that it's a strong inhibitor of carnitine acetyl transferase 1. And this avoids the formation of a fetal cycle. If you recall, I talked about, I did a video on this carnitine acetyl transferase 1. It's the process of essentially bringing the molecules into the mitochondria um, in order to go through beta oxidation. Okay, and this is sort of, and, and you can see that video if you're interested. And what I want to point out here, though, is that this is an inhibitor. It's acting as an inhibitor, and it's preventing the formation of a fetal cycle. And that fetal cycle would occur because the fatty acids would be beta-oxidized in the mitochondria to make acetyl-CoA. The acetyl-CoA would be transferred out of the mitochondria and into the cytosol, and it would simply then be used in the process of fatty acid synthesis in the cytosol. So, you know, you'd create a fetal cycle, you'd be using energy, and you'd only be making heat. You wouldn't be producing anything useful. So that's another interesting point and another interesting thing that this Milano-CoA molecule does.